to say that, you know, oh, I just like kind of thought about it in my head. Well, I would say, no, you really have to write it down Um, because that kind of like almost like seals it in, in my opinion. It's like if you just think about it and, you you know, it's almost sort of like willy nilly if it's just up in your head. But when you put pen to paper, it's almost like, okay, like this is it. Like this is I am officially saying this intention. I am. uh, It just it puts like a little bit more power behind it. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't, make sure you subscribe below so you don't miss any of our new episodes. Every week I come to you with a new episode all about how to resolve picky eating in the happiest, most relaxed way, hopefully for everyone involved. So um, this is a new month and every month I try to do a different theme. Um, So this month's theme is manifesting, which if I had to look at my whole sort of career um, or time span, I would say manifesting is probably like the newest addition to how I, you know, integrate. It's the newest um, in the picky eating world that uh, I have like created with my business. So I'm integrating manifesting into all of the other components and skills that I have. Um, so this is something I am really learning alongside with you very much. Um, and I, I absolutely love this topic and it has totally transformed my life. Um, and I'm at the point now where I'm confident in it enough to kind of share what I know and what's worked and what hasn't worked, um, you know, and how to make it a little bit easier. You know, <laughs> hopefully I can, uh, over the month, I'll share with you, you know, things that, tips and tricks sort of that I've learned of like things that really worked for me, things that really did not work for me. Um, and how to use manifesting, you know, not just for things like money and love and careers and stuff, but for also parenting and (laughs) picky eating, you know, there's, you can use, you know, law of attraction and manifesting for just about anything. Um, and of course there's some nuances within that realm, of course. Um, and you know, everyone's situation is a little bit different. Um, so, you know, I, I, like always, I give advice sort of that could kind of fit into a lot of different people's, um, boxes. Um, so of course, for more specific advice and more tailored help, we do have our, you know, one-to-one coaching and things like that. Um, but you know, for the most part, when you hear something, I always tell people, if you hear something that resonates with you, amazing, take that, use it. If it doesn't, it does not resonate with you and it doesn't make any sense. And, um, you know, it doesn't feel very aligned to whatever, you know, your situation at the time, then just leave it. Cause that might be something someone else needs to hear. And that may, you know, not be for you. So you're going to hear and absorb the things hopefully that are perfect and right for you at the time you are in your life. That's my hope for you. Um, So yeah, so let's get started. Now, um, we're going to be talking about mistakes that parents or not just parents, but anyone, right? But since this is a podcast for parents of biggie eaters, mostly the number one mistake that parents make when manifesting a better eater. So I have five things actually that I am going to talk to you about, but, um, so we're going to get down to, to the number one reason at the very end, of course, but I'm going to give you five things that, you know, um, people might think that they're doing right, but they're actually, they're actually not when it comes to manifesting. And yes, you can use this. I have alluded to using manifesting to help with picky eating in past episodes. Um, If you're in this space already and you kind of already understand what law of attraction is and what manifesting is, um, you probably would have picked up on that. If not, no worries. I am going to really kind of explain it more in depth next week of the, like more of like the basics next week, but this is sort of, um, you know, what not to do today. (laughs) That's what today is all about, right? 
So, um, you know, why is this important? So this all comes back to mindset work, right? So mindset obviously is um, a very key piece of the puzzle for me. And that's kind of what kind of sets me apart from other feeding therapists, I think, is this mindset piece. Um, you know, I have my book, Mealtime Mindset, and, you know, that kind of is like, all mindset stuff and you know our course has a little bit of mindset a little bit of the oral motor and the sensory and stuff but i honestly think that mindset has a huge place when it comes to picky eating um especially on the part of the parents so um you know and why is that because i don't think anything happens in a vacuum um you know i'd really truly and, and this is a this is a different belief than what I started with, you know, I have evolved as a therapist, a practitioner, a mom, I've evolved over time, right? So, you know, my views, you know, 10 years ago about feeding to now are, I'd say pretty drastically different, right? From you, every time you learn something, it shifts, you know, your whole view just a little bit. So what I have sort of you know, all of the knowledge I've accumulated, you know, right now, I truly feel like your child's issues are not just their issues and they're on an island alone and you're over here trying to like throw them lifesavers and, you know, send them food because, you know, they're on that island and you got to find a way to help them. It's more about the connection between you and them. And I think what is the lesson that you need to learn as well. Um, and how sort of, you know, you know, I really do believe like your child in some ways is your teacher just as much as you are their teacher. It, it really does go both ways in my opinion. And, you know, you know, feel free to have a different opinion on that, of course. Um, that's just my personal opinion at least. But, you know, I feel like every, every kind of challenge that they present it is, it's really also a challenge for us, right? Of, and it might just be, you know, what is the lesson there? It might just be learning to be more patient, learning to be more present, um, you know, learning to think outside the box or to trust your own intuition rather than a doctor's or a therapist, <laughs> right? Right. So, I, there's, there's, I mean, I don't know what the lesson is for each individual person or, you know, again, talking to the masses more or less, but, um, I, I do believe that at, you know, in like my, my core. So, you know, that's sort of, that's, I guess, sort of like the premise of like, you know, how manifesting could fit into the picky eating world a little bit. Um, and then there's also the very practical, um, part of, you know, if you understand the law of attraction, basically what is in front of you is a mirror of your internal world. Um, so when we shift our internal world <laughs> and our thoughts, we shift our thoughts and, you know, then we start to see different outcomes in the world around us, just like a mirror. Like, let's just say, you know, if you, you, started out the day with curly hair and then you went to the salon and you got it blown out and now it's a straight hair when you look in the mirror from the beginning of the day to the end of the day you're gonna it's your your look has shifted right your so your your outside world has shifted a little bit as well so when we do stuff with our own selves the things outside of us like our relationships our things how we talk you know what goes on in our day um some of that is mirrored. Of course, not every single thing in our, I don't think every single thing in our outside world is controlled just by our thoughts alone. Of course, there is some, I think, divine intervention and things that are just supposed to happen. And, um, but a lot of it is, is based on our thoughts too, you know? So, so there's a little bit of, a little bit of both, I think. Um, and again, like I said, I'm, I'm learning alongside with you guys on this. Um, so, you know, no one has it a hundred percent sorted out, but right now that's sort of where I'm at. And I am so excited to jump into these five mistakes because I have made all of them before. So, um, you know, please don't, um, please don't, uh, you know, think that, you know, 
I've got it all figured out, but um, I can tell you that these are mistakes that I've made and um, I know how to sort of avoid them now, which is great. So I'm here to teach you as well. Now, number five is not having a clear goal or intention. So, and I have a whole chapter and a whole module like in my, in my course and in the book um, about just goal setting. And I think a lot of parents think, oh yeah, yeah, I got my goals. I know I want them to be, um, you know, I want them to eat vegetables or, you know, I want them to eat more or I want them. It, it is sort of scattered. And I do feel like parents think that they have a good goal in mind, but it's not so fleshed out, not as much as they would think that they have it fleshed out. Um, you know, I'm talking about, you know, visualizing what you, what exactly you want, what it would feel like to have that, you know, in your reality at that time. Um, and, you know, even to the, to like the, to say that, you know, oh, I just like kind of thought about it in my head. Well, I would say, no, you really have to write it down. Um, Cause that kind of like, almost like seals it in, in my opinion. It's like, if you just think about it and you, you know, it's almost sort of like willy nilly if it's just up in your head. But when you put pen to paper, it's almost like, okay, like this is it. Like this is, I am officially saying this intention. I am, uh, it just, it puts like a little bit more power behind it. And anyone that teaches manifesting, I feel like they all say that same sort of principle of like, you got to write it down. You got to put pen to paper. That's like a very important piece of it. And even just, you know, taking some time to like literally close your eyes and think of what, what it would really look like if you got what you wanted out of, you know, whatever it is with, with your picky eater, you know, obviously we're kind of focusing on that, but it could be other things as well. Um, but, you know, what would that look like? What would your table look like? What tablecloth color would there be? Who would be sitting where? What would be on the table? What would it smell like? Would people be smiling? Would there be music in the background? Maybe you'd be out at a restaurant. Maybe you'd be on vacation. Um, you know, but you got to like really like down to those little details. What's on the table? What does it smell like? What's something that they said? Maybe they said the words, mom, I can't believe I just ate that. I'm so excited or I'm so proud of myself for eating this. You know, you know, what are the words that were said? Um, did you exchange a glance with your partner and you were just so excited? You know, I want you to get that detailed um, and not having that clear goal and intention, I think is like one of the reasons, one of the reasons that parents are just not actually seeing their goals come to fruition. It's because they didn't have a really firm goal from the outset. Like, what did, where did you start? Like, it was it just sort of, I want them to eat more. Like, um, I don't want them to be a picky eater anymore. Like, that's a very vague general goal. And I'm talking about super, super specific goals. And this is something you can do right now for free. Just take some time. Just take literally set a timer for five minutes and get out a, you know, a pad of paper and a pen and just get writing and write as many details as you can, even if it's just for those five minutes. Um, and keep that piece of paper with you. Keep it in a place where you'll reread it again, where you'll you know, be forced to, you know, keep it on your refrigerator or right next to your bed and, you know, read it a couple of times. Like, don't, don't just like let that, don't just close the book and put it away. Like, if that's your goal, make that like a priority, right? Okay. So that's five. Number four. Okay. Not being in resonance with that goal. So this is, you know, you're not, trusting that it could even happen. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, especially with manifesting, I feel like people, and don't get me wrong, we have our a affirmations that, um, you know, we talk about and I teach about. Um, if you haven't listened to that podcast episode or read the chapter in the book about it or the course or whatever, <laughs> um, the affirmations are like an I am statement, like I am, uh, or, you know, 
my my child is uh, loves vegetables, like right, like that would be like a statement in present tense of what is happening that you want to happen, right? But you say it as if it's happening now, right? So um, a lot of times, our conscious brain, if we know that that's not true, for me this was so 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 true. If I knew that something wasn't true, I couldn't just say like, oh. Um, you know, uh, like, uh, oh, I ha- I just, I got a thousand dollar check in the mail. Like I couldn't get behind that because I, in my heart, I truly didn't believe that it was possible to happen. Right. So I, you know, even though I would write those affirmations and I would, you know, do my best to get into the feeling of it, I couldn't really get behind it. And I think Sometimes when your kid is only eating like three foods and if you're saying like, yeah, they they love food. Yeah, they're going to eat everything. Oh, they love vegetables. Oh, they love cooking. And you know that they are nowhere near that. It's just too big of a leap to make. And I think that was what my problem was. So someone taught me this amazing trick and it changed everything. Okay, so instead of saying that, affirmation or I, that statement that you just can't get behind just yet, I want you to say, I wonder what it would feel like if, right? So instead of saying, my child loves to eat vegetables, they love vegetables, they love vegetables, and really you can't believe it. Just say, I wonder what it would feel like if they loved to eat vegetables. Because just saying, I wonder, takes the pressure off somehow. It just right? Words are sort of magical in that way. But just rephrasing it totally takes that pressure off and it makes it so much easier. So (laughs) try just flipping that statement to, I wonder what it would feel like if, and then allow your mind to wonder what comes up right after that. Oh, I wonder what it would feel like to get a thousand dollar check in the mail. It would feel pretty good, (laughs) right? Um, but that's a little bit, just a, just a little, this is what I mean about just changing words a little bit can be so magical and so, so life-changing sometimes, right? Okay, so that was four. Um, now, number three is not being grateful for the small things. And this is a problem a lot of our parents have, but they're always looking at the big, big goal of like the vegetables, let's just say. Vegetables is an easy one because that's a picky eater, uh, favorite food to hate, right? <laughs> um, so let's just say it's vegetables. And, you know, you're like, the therapist is like, wow, today they touched a carrot. And as a parent, you're like, yeah, but I wanted them to eat the carrot. Like, I don't care if they touched it. Okay. So that's right. That right there is the problem. We have to be grateful for all of the small steps in between. And it, I know that it is hard when all you're thinking about is that, you know, that last step, the final goal. But if you can't be grateful for the small things that lead up to that goal, you're, you're just, it, you're, it is an uphill battle. You're, you're making it much harder for yourself to manifest that end goal you will get to that end goal a lot quicker if you can have gratitude for all of those little tiny steps in between. And there are a lot of small steps in between, right? And, you know, we've had kids that literally would never touch a solid food. They only eat purees. That happens more often than you would think. And they're not just little babies. They're like eight, nine-year-old kids. So it does happen that there's kids that will only eat one texture. And, you know, for us to, oh my God, he touched it. Wow. We had a great day. Oh my God. He brought it up to his mouth and smelled it. Wow. He licked it today. You know, those are therapists celebrate that. And I think sometimes parents think, oh, well, they must think that they did such a good job, but you know, they, they couldn't get him to eat it today. But I'm telling you, we get excited because we know that those small baby steps lead to our bigger goal. And we can't get to that bigger goal until these little baby steps are met. Okay, so as hard as it may be, I really want you to try to psych yourself up and maybe set the bar a little bit lower to start of 
man, maybe they'll just touch it today. That would be great. You know, touching a new food. That's amazing. Sometimes they just scream and run out of the room. So touching a new food would be a huge step forward, right? So getting super excited for that. Okay. Number two is getting too attached to the outcome. And I know how hard this is because I too am very, very attached to the outcome of my goals. And, um, you know, when you, when you set an intention and you, you made the effort to write it down and say your affirmations and you visualized it, like, I know it's something you really want because you're doing some work to get to that goal. So I know what it feels like to be so attached to that outcome, but it is to your detriment to be that attached because when you are so attached to something, like imagine like if you've ever picked up sand from the beach and you squeeze that sand, a whole bunch would just fall right out. And that is because um, when you want something so bad, it actually slips right through your fingers. It actually makes it harder for it to come to you. It's almost like you put up a wall in front of between you and that and that goal from coming to fruition. And I know from very firsthand experience that for a very long time, I as as much as I tried to detach from that goal, I just had the hardest time. So, you know, you might think that it has to look a certain way or it has to play out a certain way or they have to eat it in a certain location or it has to be a certain food that they eat or they have to eat it without, you know, this face or this comment or this whatever. You know, you have a maybe a vision of exactly you want it to be exactly the way it was in your visualization. Right. But, you know. For if you want that to happen, we we need to let go of the outcome. So you know, you might what what really worked for me at least what I could share worked for me was um you know and I've listened to what seems to me like hundreds of people talk about this exact issue um and how to overcome it and different people have different methods of overcoming it but what worked best for me was basically setting that intention right even if it was just writing that down that goal and intention down and basically turning it over to the universe and being like you know what i know you're working it all out you've got it i leave it in your good hands okay and then boom switch to a totally different activity that does not involve thinking about that outcome at all. Like you want to detach immediately. And that was very powerful for me. I found that when I did not have that instruction to immediately switch to to something else, I would dwell on it a little bit and I would think about it too much. And I would I would start thinking of different ideas and maybe think about, oh, well, that might not happen that way because of this reason. And, you know, oh, that might be a little challenging. You know, I don't, maybe I should have rephrased how I said that, or maybe I didn't write it the right way, or um, did I say it enough time? No, like just totally detach, pretend it like doesn't exist to some degree, to some degree. Of course, there's some actions that we take, but just say like, I know what's going to happen just trusting that detaching. I know what's going to happen. It's done. I I set my intention. It's out there. And I'm just going to move on. But immediately switching to a totally different activity. So I found not doing this right before bed to be very helpful because when I would do it right before bed, I would lay down and then I'd start thinking about what I literally was just doing. So um, the best things for me were like when there was... Um, someplace I had to go or a project I had to do, or, um, you know, I had to, I had to cook, um, you know, so like I'd start cooking right away or I would, um, I I had to take the dog for a walk, like, um, something where I had to like go and do a bunch of things. Um, like maybe it's like, okay, now I got to get the kids ready for school. Right. So it's like, okay, all of a sudden I'm going to be very, very busy doing a lot of different things. That's like kind of what you want to switch to something where, you know, you're going to be distracted for the next like 30 minutes. (laughs) Okay. 
So see if that helps. Um, it totally worked and helped for me and helped me. Okay, now our very, very last one. Um, now this, I think, is the number one mistake the parents make when they're trying to manifest a better eater, is using negative words. And I think I was guilty of this too. It wasn't, it, someone pointed it out um, and like, I forget even who it was, honestly, but the way they pointed it out, I was like, I felt like, like an idiot. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, of course. And it comes back to your subconscious brain and how your subconscious brain isn't, is very literal. It doesn't get humor, sarcasm. It doesn't even understand like when you put not in front of it. So let me give you an example. Um, you know, if you had a goal that said, my child is not going to be a picky eater anymore. They are, um, they're, they're no longer scared of food, right? You might think that that's a great goal that you, you know, that's exactly what you want, but you're using the wrong words. So, and this works the same. So this, it, it came to me with like money, right? So someone said like, oh, if you said, I want to be debt free, you're still using the word debt and your subconscious, a lot of people's self subconscious brains associate debt with a negative. Like you, like, that's a bad thing. You don't want debt, right? So by using the word debt, your, my brain was literally focusing on the wrong thing. The thing I didn't want, <laughs> right? So by switching my focus, my switching my word to a positive word, it just changed everything. So you don't use the words picky eater, scared of food, ARFID, food anxiety. Like don't use anything negative like that. When you are kind of doing this manifesting work, doing this law of attraction work. Um, so something you might say something like they love food, right? Just switch just a little word choice change there is all the, all the difference. They love food now. <laughs> he loves eating vegetables. Um, they're excited to, to, to try new foods, right? Just switching that script a little bit can be the key, the key to, to changing the outcomes. And personally, personal story, right? When I started using some of these principles, all of a sudden I was like, um, huh. He just, he just had that, huh? He just tried that. I didn't even ask him. I wasn't even thinking about having him try that, but wow, way to go. That's awesome. Right? So mindset, I think is a huge part of, of this work. And I do think it could be a really great tool. And I'm not saying that your child is a picky eater because of your thoughts, right? But I'm saying that we can possibly affect the outcome of their picky eating by thinking more positive thoughts, um, which is amazing. And science has literally proven that when you think positively about something, a situation, a person, there are actual like changes that they can detect in the body um, at the cellular level. Like this is, there are studies about this, but at the cellular level, things start to change when you think positively about a situation versus negatively. Um, and, uh, you know, I think you just, you cannot underestimate the power of the mind. It is so much more powerful than you are giving it credit for. And just thinking that we as parents have this effect on the outcome that we're seeking just by changing our thoughts, I think is so empowering and life-changing and it's easy and it's free to do. Now, don't get me wrong. Have I spent money learning, taking courses, having coaches? Absolutely. Because that's 
I wanted to master it. I wanted to, you know what I mean? I, I, I needed help. I had help. I, I had all of the tools. People gave me all the information, but I personally still needed help to get there. And now I, now that it, cl- it just clicked and it's so amazing. Um, and I just, I want that for you guys too. And I'm super excited. I hope you try these out. Please tell me in the comments if you've tried these things, if they're working for you, if this was eye-opening, if you've never heard of this before. Um, I really do want to know and get to know the listeners. So please share in the comments so that, um, you know, I could respond, um, especially on YouTube. It's a little easier for me to respond there, of course, but I'm so happy to engage with you guys and, and talk to you about it. Now, um, if you do need more specific help with your picky eater, like I said, we do have um, my mealtime mindset book, my parent course, picky plate to clean slate. I have a manifesting course even, um, you know, how to manifest the best help for your child, um, which teaches all of the steps to manifesting as well as some tips and tricks. But, um, you know, hopefully these few t- tricks will, um, you know, make it a lot easier for you to manifest the goals that you have for your family. And um, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed. Um, So, you know, please let me know how it goes. I'm really excited to hear about it. And thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. And next week, I'm going to get more into the nitty gritty about exactly (laughs) what manifesting is. If you have no idea what I was talking about today and you're like, this all sounds great, Christine, but I don't know anything about what you're talking about. Tune in next week because I am going to break it down on a more basic level for you as well. And even for, I always find even for people that know a lot about this already, sometimes going back to the basics can really be huge. And just hearing someone else say it, sometimes just in a different way. Like I've had to hear so many people say the same sort of lessons to me uh, and just sometimes in a little bit of a different way, it's just all of a sudden it just clicks. So you never know where you're going to get that from. So you guys have a great week and uh, hopefully you have some happy meal times ahead. Bye now. Thank you for listening to How to Unpicky Your Picky Eater. To learn more about achieving your child's feeding goals, check out Christine's website at foodologyfeeding.com. And be sure to tune in next time to How to Unpicky Your Picky Eater.